Defense attorneys in the $21 million rape lawsuit against Derrick Rose complained about the racial and ethnic makeup of the prospective Los Angeles jury pool, noting the fact that there were only two African-American, like the defendants, in that 15 of the first 27 jurors were Hispanic, which is the ethnicity of the woman. Judge Michael W. Fitzgerald said the jury pool was selected at random from a diverse population and that the racial makeup of it was just tough luck. Rose was not in the Los Angeles courtroom because the New York Knicks open their preseason in Houston the same day, but he was expected to appear Thursday. Stephen A., what's your reaction to the judge's comments? I have a problem with it. I have a, I have a big problem with it. And I'm certainly not trying to absolve Derek Rose of anything. He says he's innocent. Obviously, uh, the alleged victim believes otherwise, and we'll find out whatever we can find out as the, as the civil trial unfolds. We'll learn more about it. And if he did anything wrong uh, to that young lady, he deserves his comeuppance, as any man would. You don't do something like that to any human being, especially a woman. Having said all of that, my issue is with the judge and his comment basically saying tough luck. Um, I am no lawyer, even though, Max, if I were not doing this, um, uh, everyone that knows me knows that I would have I would have uh, pursued being a criminal lawyer. That was actually my dream job, to be a criminal lawyer uh, when I was in school. I will tell you this, um, just being a law and order fanatic, not being an expert on the law, not knowing anything, one of the things that every American citizen uh, is, 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 is aware of is the popular saying, uh, a jury of your peers. The defendant is who you're referring to here, no one else. And if the defendant in question is Derrick Rose, and he is an African-American, and you only have two African-American jurors, that's a problem. And for a judge to sit up there and say, well, tough, no, that, I, I, I don't vibe with that. Now, if, if I'm wrong because I'm not familiar with the legal lease, I apologize. I certainly get that. But the flip side to all of this is let's be very, very clear here. When you are a defendant and you are on trial in any capacity, maybe it's different for a criminal trial than it is for a civil trial, I'm not sure. I do not know the answer to that question. But I was always, I've always been under the impression that if you are a defendant in a courtroom, and a jury is, is, is being, is, is judging you, rather, then it is supposed to be a jury of your peers. And if Derrick Rose is bringing that into question, I think that's very legitimate on his part, and I think it warrants a different answer from the judge than tough luck. I, I, I definitely think that that's the case, particularly, and I'm going to go here, you're an African-American in this country, well, listen, we've been talking about police brutality and all of that other stuff. Let me be very, very clear. As an African-American, the African-American community has historically had issues with the justice system, not just police officers. When you go to court, when you go to trial, when you look at juries, when you're thinking about a judge, when you think about the laws in place, there are a bevy of questions that raise the eyebrows. And so, for me, this is one of those things where it's applicable. You're Derrick Rose. You are an African-American. You are a superstar, multimillionaire athlete. You are involved in a civil trial where the alleged victim is claiming that you and two others raped her. Okay, you deserve what you get if you're guilty. I tell you that much. But the jury should somehow represent him. And two out of, what is it, 10, 11, 12 jurors doesn't seem to fit that bill, Max. It just doesn't. Um, Derek Rose has been treating this in the press, it seems, a bit casually. He's not giving the standard no comment answer when he's asked questions. He's answering every question. And uh, maybe he should be, may, maybe he's not aware of how serious the ac accusations are, or maybe he is innocent and believes he is innocent and feels, therefore, that justice will prevail and he can answer questions uh, openly because he, there hasn't been a settlement in this case. He is answering all the questions. Um, but the defense, his defense team, believes that, and, and, and defense attorneys, period, believe that the ethnic composition and racial composition of a jury is important in terms of getting uh, just verdicts for their clients. And 
We'd like to believe we live in a post-racial world, and it, and it wouldn't be, which is why I suppose if you're in a given neighborhood, you just do a random selection, and whatever the composition of the jury is, it is. But the fact is, when the judge says, hey, that's just your tough luck to Derek Rose's defense attorney, um, it is his tough luck because at the very least, defense attorneys believe, who are getting paid to get their client off, believe that it is that they will not get as good of uh, an outcome uh, if they don't if they're if they're underrepresented in terms of the racial um, uh, makeup of the jur of the jury pool of the jury rather well, and and so and so it is very tough luck for him because we don't in fact live in a post racial world these things do seem to have an effect on outcomes. Well, you're absolutely right about that, and that was my point. I also want to sit there and make sure that I don't absolve Derrick Rose. First of all, he should have been there for jury selection. A preseason game ain't more important than this. Missed the damn game. He certainly missed enough games for lesser reasons in his career, okay? He should have been there for the jury selection. He should have been there to make sure that he was face-to-face -face with potential jurors so they could see him and he had something to do in terms of whispering in his uh, defense attorney's ear, or, you know, that, again, I got a problem with this, that, or the other. He certain that was his mistake. He owns that. But the racial composition that you alluded to, it's not something to be ignored. It's something that black people have complained about throughout history. That's one of the things we've complained about with our justice system. Make no mistake about it. It's, it's, it's pivotal. It's relevant. It's necessary, and I, I'll go as far as to say this. The judge is wrong to have such a cavalier attitude. I'd also like to say this, Max. I don't get the impression that De Derrick Rose is cavalier about this at all. Him answering questions is somebody that appears to be defiant about his innocence. Now, he had damn well better be innocent. There's no question about that. But he is somebody that is, is, is unwise as it, as it may be, is stupid as it may be. The fact of the matter is, he's somebody that cannot be accused of ducking this issue. Because every time you put a microphone or a camera in his face and ask him a question, he's not running from it at all. But I think he's it is fair to... steadfastly... I understand and, what you're saying. I don't say ahead, cavalier, ahead, but maybe a little bit casual in terms of, rather than giving no comments, actually giving the comment, in terms of not missing a preseason game. And that can come off one of two ways, at least okay, two ways. Okay, not missing a preseason game. R right. Not missing a game. But when you put saying. the whole okay. picture together, it can either come off to people as, oh, well, he must really be or believe he is innocent of these charges, or he would be taking this, at least the, the appearance would be he's taking it more seriously, or... He doesn't get how serious this whole thing is and therefore is, is part of a problem in, 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 from a societal point of view. Um, well, uh, that could be interpreted very different in two very different ways. It could be least. both. It, it, it could be both. It could be that he is coming across as relatively innocent with his willingness to speak on the issue. But then the flip side is him missing a portion of it to play in a preseason game. Well, it goes towards the cavalier aspect. I mean, Molly, M M Molly, I'd like to know what you think about this real quick. I mean, you could take it both ways. He should have been there. Shouldn't have been in some damn preseason game. But at the same time, he hasn't run from the issue when you put a microphone or a camera in front of his face. You know, Stephen A., I don't know enough about the details of the actual case, so I don't want to do speak to it. Um, I, I have an idea. I, I've read articles on it in, in the past, and it was pretty graphic. I just hope through the court system we can kind of get to the bottom here uh, either way. But I, I don't really I know agree. enough to speak on, on the uh, victim's uh, behalf or Derek Rose. No, I was just talking about what we were saying in terms of how he was coming across, whether it's in front of the camera or 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 it's or hard to know because playing the game because instead if, of skipping the game. If, if he's completely yeah. innocent, I get it because you got nothing to hide, so don't hide and shy away from the cameras. If he's not, it's kind of like why are you why are you acting so casual? And as far as the preseason game, no, I don't think he should have been at the preseason game. I, I would I would have went to court I and agree. shown up and, and dealt with there. those issues and, and shown how serious it is. But again, maybe he feels he's innocent. It's all going to be taken care of, so he it's going to be behind him and he's focusing on on basketball so just kind of too much gray area there for for me to really side with either yeah. of you but uh coming up next we are going to stay with the nba did duran's decision to take his talents to golden state ruin the regular season we will reveal those results after the break
First Take is brought to you by Nissan, innovation that excites. Coming up tomorrow on the show, rapper, producer, and Atlanta superfan T.I. will be in the house. We're looking forward to that. Tune in tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN2. Stephen A., before we get to our next topic here, I think there was something you had wanted to clear up. Well, I need to clear this up because yesterday, one of uh, the mistake that I made, um, I said that while LeBron James uh, endorsed Hillary Clinton, Dan Gilbert, the owner for the Cleveland Cavaliers, had endorsed Trump. Uh, Dan Gilbert had some folks reach out to me to say that that is absolutely not true. He never has endorsed Donald Trump, uh, despite the Republican National Convention being at the Quickens and Loans Arena, and, and, and despite the fact that a Republican Party was hosted at one of, by one of the companies Dan Gilbert owns in Detroit last Friday. Um, there is no endorsement of Trump. He's never endorsed either candidate. He has not endorsed Trump. He, had not, he has not endorsed Hillary Rodham Clinton. And he just wanted to make sure that I emphasize that the Cavaliers organization rather wanted to make sure mm -hmm. that I emphasize that for the record. They, he did, Dan Gilbert did not endorse Donald Trump. So that was my mistake. There was, there was a Republican Party at, one, at, at a place where Dan Gilbert's company owns and rents out this place, and they hosted a Republican Party there, but that doesn't mean they endorse Trump. So I want to make sure I corrected that. Got it. Appreciate you clearing that up. Uh, let's get to our topic now. We asked you guys to weigh in on Twitter. Did Kevin Durant ruin the regular season? You know what Stephen A thinks. And 56% are with him saying yes. Did our Twitter followers get it right, Mr. Smith? For once. For once, they did. Listen, man. Look, hey, Max, the, Ma see, 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 Max loving his boxing, even though he loves and knows his basketball, too. And I can't wait to talk NBA basketball throughout him this he year because he knows his more. basketball the way that I know my boxing. The fact of the matter is Max Kellerman sits up there. And you know what I realize about Max Molly? What? Max don't like competition. Max likes oh. blowouts. Max likes annihilations. Max likes all that. That's Max why doesn't I like the show. thrill, <laughs> the adventure, or whatever the case may be. You wish, boy, you wish. <laughs> Please don't get me started. I can't believe this, but that's what Max wants. That's what Max wants. He wants blowouts. That's okay. No, I want you no, to travel but there to is Fly all the way across the country, there is Max. Something, Go ahead. There is something to watching Mike Tyson in his prime knock out Michael Spinks in one round. You could be ringside for that, too, and that's what we're about to see. I hope it happens for you. I hope it happens happens for you. I hope you have to fly across the country to watch boxing matches and everything ends for you this year in 30 seconds. Way, that would be the equivalent. I'm wishing that on you, Max <laughs> Kellerman. The country did get it right. 44% of the country who obviously feel that he didn't ruin the regular season are right. And I can't wait for the rubber match. In the finals, we already know what it's going to be. I will watch the whole season. Yeah, I'll still but watch. June's a long way away. Yep, that's right. June's a long way away. You know how much, much traveling I got to do between now and June? Oh, you can watch some of the most awesome basketball no. ever played by the Golden no. State Warriors. There's no gap. Don't worry about you it. You're not seeing a super sick. team. Don't worry. You There's don't no want gap. Competition. Just the I hope Max's fight ends in 30 seconds after he flies across Do the country. Do you watch all Triple G? You like seconds. Triple G fights, don't you? You like watching Triple and don't G. We'll in 30 see seconds. you all tomorrow. T.I. will be here. Have a great day.